everyone. This is Justin and Max from Justin and Max Games once again. And we just played, I played uh, two or three times mm -hmm. this game, and then Max got to play it once in a three-player. It's Phalanx uh, by Bernd Eisenstein. Published by Iron Games. Iron Games. I once called it Iron Games. What a dummy. <laughs> well, anyway, I really liked it. Yes. I really liked it. There are so many games that are guys on a map. And you're this is a different kind of guys on the map. The, I'll, I'll tell you some of the things that I found most intriguing about the game. And then I have like one negative. But one of the things I really like about this game is that in so many guys on a map where you have a territory, you have a territory here, and your opponents have a territory there and there. In this game, when you have a starting position, you have a starting position in two different areas. Yes, you start on opposite sides of the board. And so that you can kind of come in and you're, you're already surrounded by other people immediately. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're exactly right. You have to have two people to occupy a city. So you're kind of, you know, you're using up your people if you get too many cities. But at the same time, uh, you want to get into those regions because you have um, cards that you need to get the qualifications in order to play the card. Like this card, you need to have occupied two cities in order to play it. And this guy, which is occupy to a wayside. A wayside? Is it a, way, a wayside or a wayseas? I think it's a wayseas. A wayseas. A wayseas. A wayseas. Uh, but that's a really neat thing. You know, all of these cards, there's a cost to get the card originally, mm -hmm. and then you need to qualify for the card before you can play it. And that's the really neat mm -hmm. thing. I said that this was, you know, there's so many games where there's guys on a map and you're fighting each other. And with the card track moving down. Right. Uh, there's always a cost to get the card in the first place. So you think, well, it's only it's only going to be $1 to $5 to get the mm -hmm. card. But a lot of the cards you need to be able to have money money and just to play it. Like the very interesting thing is like, oh, no, $13. You just have to have $13. Yeah, you don't even have to spend it. You don't have to spend it. That's the really neat thing. When I When I first thought about this game, I realized, you know what? Even though there's guys on the map... It's really a strategy card. Euro game, card game. Yeah. Strategy card Euro game. There's more going on. Half the time I'm not even looking at the board. I'm looking mostly like, at oh my, my cards. God, what's happening? Oh, I get to place the guy out now? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't do, know what's going on. Because you only can get three actions with your three die. Maximum. Um, maximum three of three actions. And you might get bad rolls. Another thing I really like about the game is that warfare. There's so many games where warfare is, here, I'll take a die. You get a die. You roll the die, I roll the die, you I got win. a three, he got he wins it. In this It's different. Yeah, there's never it's <laughs> your military strength, mm -hmm. period. As you can see on the bottom of this card, there's a little four circle with a slash through it, I guess. No, that's a that's a that's a shield with a sword with like a spear behind it. Never even looked at it closest. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, the guy's like this with the spear behind it. And you can see on this card in the bottom right corner. There is a shield and spear with a little four next to it. And that means you get four power. And with all your cards added up, you might get, let's say, 12. Mm -hmm. And if you have 11, I could clearly attack you and just win. But then I'd lose three strength. Right, that's the key. You can't always stay stronger because you're going to lose it. You'll get it back at the end of the game. But just for the war. But for doing those game. battles. And that's the other interesting thing about these cards is that they interact with one another. For example, uh, this uh, this character, uh, what's his name here? Uh, Antigonus. Uh, he gets, m on his own, he has no power, but he has more power with uh, various uh, purple cards that you're able mm -hmm. to play, which are called um, equipment. equipment cards. Equipment cards, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have your leaders and you have equipment. So they all interact. The first time I played, what happened was I played all of these white cards, these infantry cards, and I had a ton of stuff out on the board. I had total control of the board. But then in the last couple of rounds, everything flips. In the beginning of the game, or three quarters of the game, or even more, the battles are based just on your strength mm -hmm. as opposed to someone else's strength. But once, here at the end... Once it might, it's in the last seven cards. Mm -hmm. In the game I played, it turned out to be the last card, mm -hmm. which was funny. But in this card, it shows that for your military strength, it is all of your orange cards and your purple cards added together, minus the amount of battles you've been in. Exactly right. Battles that you've won previously in the game. Yeah. Yeah. That you've had turned cards. And so then, then 
all bets are off. And like the first time I played when I had all of these white cards, I thought I had so much strength and then I lost territory all over the board because I didn't think about the other things. I lost the points at the end. What a thoughtful game. That's really my... I, you know, the some people have made comments that they, they're not so crazy about the art, and the art is very unique. And it's, a, it's different than a lot of other art I've seen in games, but I like it. Mm. I think it's just... It just has its own unique feel mm. to it. It's very grungy kind of and looking. Just a quick question. A quick question. About this card. Yes. What if you have no purple, no orange cards, and you've been in a battle, battle previously? I guess then you're in the negatives, <laughs> which was what, what my situation was. I had like negative four, and then, <laughs> then she could just like mom she, just yeah. Like if she had like eight, she could like go at you. Yes, I twelve times. The thing was, I didn't understand all of the principles in the game. the The game has a lot going Last, on. The, one of my most important roles in the game. Mm -hmm. I got one one one. You got a one one one. I let him re-roll it. I know that's not in the instructions, but a one one one. Well, that's the other interesting thing, you know. The die. Uh, the die, you could always spend the guy, meaning you're going to expel him from your group entirely. And you have limited amount of guys, so that's not so easy. You could expel a guy, oh, there he goes, to turn one of your die to any number you want. You would have had to do that, m done that multiple. And you can't Three do it times. from guys on the board. They have to be guys in your supply to mm -hmm. do that, to do what you want it to do. And another thing that I find very interesting mm -hmm. is if you make your guys angry, you get money. If you make them happy, you lose money. Yes, you and lose money because you're you're giving your money back. If they're happy, it's easier to play actions. Yes. But a lot of the cards, like this one, it says 16 with the die. You need to have a total of 16 anger. So if all yeah, you guys your, are um, happy, then you're in your row. you'll get a bunch of cards, but you won't be able to play them because you don't have anger. Then you have to push die. The manipulation of die, I mean, a lot of people have With spoken like about pushing I'd and, like it. And then giving three off. Some, it's a unique idea. Yes, I've never seen it in any other game ever. And it's a total Euro type style, style thing. So it looks the like it, guy, it, the, it, the strata to the home die. Right, the row has to be the home die. They're like, hey, this is a cool die, but I need him over here. No. Ultimately speaking, it's a warish kind of game, but battles never seem too mean, really. So it's like a war idea. But it's wrapped in a strategy mechanism. But it's wrapped in like a strategy, almost resource management kind of way. Yeah, exactly. Resor like, though, total resource even management. Even though there's no actual resources, with like the cards and the ideas, it's kind of a resource Right, management. yeah. That, and that's another thing. I appreciate a few things about the game. I do wish for a couple of teeny changes. Um, one, I think... Uh, a player aid, like, because everything is printed on cards, even the money thing and everything. Mm -hmm. So, and and also your home area with the um, uh, the your home area everything and the traveling guy. Everything is cards. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe like four cards that would be um, player aids, just a very succinct. I know they have it in the manual, mm -hmm. but I'm not crazy about the way it is in the manual. I think just one that says like one. And I know this game also they were trying to make it not to language. Uh, pertinent, mm -hmm. but maybe just some symbols on a card, so you can just say, "Oh yeah, these are the these are the things I could do on this turn." And if, if I have less than, I have mm -hmm. more than. And then another thing I don't really like is the money cards because yeah. they're very like confusing, and it's just like weird orders, and it's just like across. And he and takes like, college math. And it's like up and down. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. And like the background. Yeah. Is like almost the same color. Yeah. And then like you have to flip it over. The circle. Money. Yeah, the money. I mean, I love the theme that they use the right money and the right sim. Uh, the uh, the the shields and the thing, but the the images for the points or the your power. The images for money are very similar, and these money cards have the same almost the same color background. Yeah, and then this. And then, like, oh, you your to... one, two, three. I'm not gonna really belabor it. I just it's just my. This is my big peeve in the game. This, uh, what I feel like would have been going up here is just a single, just a little bit more cardboard, just four tracks with a cube. For each player. Oh, yeah, cube. Four tracks with a cube of yellow, blue, or red, or green, or whatever the other color is, and just like... Uh, the car the other cards, though, I really like the cards. They have a nice feel. They have a nice... The, the, the double X, kind of like slash, or yeah, like, like that. Like, the back, it's really cool because you can see how there's three X's mm -hmm. and one X for the round three and round one. Um, another thing, if the game was uh, reprinted, I, I know it looks kind of cool, but I, I prefer instructions without the pictures, like as the background. It, it just it makes it more difficult to read. And I'm trying to read instruction booklets all the time. So, like, 
I like some imagery to yeah. tell you what to do. Illustrations. Or like even if like there's words over here have mm -hmm. like an illustration. But, but, yeah, to me it was a little bit too much. So the the cards with that... Oh, and I do like... We haven't tried it out as of yet. With the individual benefits. The, uh, the, the asymmetrical powers to the game. Which... You like, you like asymmetrical. I like asymmetrical, but our third player just likes them strongly. That's me. She likes asymmetrical. She does? She does. You don't like it. I don't like asymmetrical. I don't. I like everyone starting carte blanche. <sighs> everyone has the same <laughs> thing. Uh, but I could try it. You know, I we haven't we haven't done that uh, just because it's not my mm -hmm. my favorite thing to do. And then mm -hmm. only one more tiny little bitty criticism. Okay, is repeated art. Yeah, we you know we were just reviewing a game Coimbra, mm -hmm. and, and that one it's worse. Art. But those are worse because these guys are at least both infantry. They might have a little bit different on the top and a little bit different on the bottom, but they're the same idea. But in Coimbra, it's completely different. Yeah, and in this one, I feel... Because um, it's not confusing. It's not com Yeah, it doesn't but confuse me. One thing that I do really like about the art is how, like, this is the level one guy, and then at level three, he gets, like, shields and armor. And yeah, so cool. there's that detail to that. And also the archerman, it's just, like, that... Yeah, he's just kind of hanging out. To that. That. It's super cool how it, like... And you know what? I was looking at all of our games, and I was trying to say, well, what does this feel like to me? It doesn't feel like any other game to me. Like, I don't... There's a lot of games where you have the mechanism of a card, and then they slide down as you buy something. Now you can get something that's less expensive. Um, nine times out of ten, we were all taking something in the one, two, three region. <laughs> Because um, after a while, mm -hmm. I couldn't really do anything, so I was like, one. And you can one. decide, although the instructions say it's not suggested, one. you could decide one. you don't want a card, and one. it just I was just spending game. one dollar, it wasn't really that bad, and I ended up accidentally getting to play one. Yes. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sometimes works. Uh, the other thing that I like is the, the randomization aspect of the Era 1 cards, the Era 2, the Era 3 and cards. Like, the setup of like the era one where you have to take out seven, shuffle them separately, put this, deal some out, shuffle them back in, put the seven at the bottom. Oh, yeah. with the uh, the the last card mm -hmm. in the shuffling, and it's different with different it's a amount of players. Confusing, but cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't mind. There's a there's a, there's um, a game that we have um, uh, the pyramids game. What is it called? Um, Valley of the Kings. Yes. Where there's multiple eras, and then there's era one and era two or whatever. So I've Same seen that idea. before. So there are, there are ideas. This isn't, I mean, there's area control here, but the sliding cards. But something that is slightly different about the mm -hmm. era of this game is nothing changes, just the cards get better. The cards get better, nothing yeah. Happens. There's no radical change. But it is also a timing mechanism, and you could tell, <laughs> yeah, if you're in two or you see three X's, then you know, I okay. better finish what I wanted to do. Or else I ain't going to be able to do anything more. I thought I was doing terrible. Yeah, and you came out with just a couple points under... I was two points behind you, which one? Yeah. I remember yesterday when we finished, you said you were in that seven and a half, seven point five 7.5 region. Mm -hmm. And I was also 7.5 on to 8, you know. I, I really, It would be a game that I would I always would, enjoy playing. So if you're a 7.5 to 8, I'm a 7.5 to 7. Okay, so 7.5? Yeah. Okay. I think that would be a good one. The, the cost of the game and the, the, the components, it all makes sense to me. It's a small box. It's an easy-to-travel box. Small, compact. The game doesn't last a long time. It's really quick. Once you mm -hmm. know what you're doing, it's always fun rolling die and saying, oh, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And it's, to me, unique. I think, yeah, 7.5 is about, mm -hmm. just about right. And one more thing mm -hmm. that I should mention is with the rolling die, mm -hmm. you might think that, like, oh, randomization. It's a good kind of randomization. It's a good kind of randomization. It's not bad. It's, it's very minor it's, randomization. It's just like life. You don't know what life is going to face but you. But you can do what... You mitigate life. it as you're going, as it's going. So anyway, this was a quick and fun review of the very cool game, Phalanx. Phalanx. Oh!